Today, I'm going to give you five players that are sell highs in fantasy basketball. These players are outperforming what I expect them to do for the rest of the season. So if you've got them on your team, look to potentially trade them and capitalize on their value now. Let's go! talking about practice. LeBron James with no regard for human life. And he's going to go. Back out to Allen. His three-pointer. Bang! Curry for three. Wow! Unbelievable. Making it rain in New York. We the North are now we the champions. Not the destination. It's the journey. Mamba out. G'day and Welcome to the Ball Boys Fantasy Basketball Podcast. I'm your host, Mitch Casey, and you can find me on Twitter at Ball Boys Fantasy. And today we are continuing uh, the buy low, sell high series. Yesterday we had the buy low video where we had five players that I think are going to improve on what they've been doing, and you can maybe get them at a discount. Today we are talking about five players who are a sell high that are probably going to drop down eventually. And if you can get them for what they're producing at the moment or close to, then I think in the long term, you're going to be winning out. So we're going to talk about five players. There are obviously more players that we could talk about, but these players to me are at least the most, uh, I want to say obvious, but also I think the most maybe potentially executable trades that you could potentially do in your leagues. Um, and yeah, this is just a good exercise as well to make sure that we are staying across what is happening in the NBA and make sure we are keeping our own expectations in check as well because a lot of the times we see what's happening and we think it's just going to continue the way it's been going, but a lot can change in the span of two weeks, which is how often I'm going to be doing these videos. So that is the point, I guess, of this exercise. If you haven't already, go and check out the podcast where we did the buy low videos after you've watched this one here. But let's start off with probably, in my opinion, maybe the most obvious and the biggest uh, sell-high candidate on this list today, and that is Jonas Valanciunas, who is absolutely tearing it up at the moment and bringing the blocks along this season, which is a big reason as to why he is a, um, you know, his value and his ranking is up a lot higher. He is, at the moment... On the season, the 37th ranked player, but if you look at his last two weeks especially, he is ranked 39th in minus one, 32nd in, uh, sorry, 22nd in nine category leagues and 24th in Yahoo points leagues. Um, And the big reason for this one here is the fact that he's getting really randomly 3.1 assists. He's also getting 2.1 blocks per game in the last uh, last two weeks. He's doing well in terms of his usage, which is all fine. Like the points and rebounds, I think, are maintainable. The minutes are probably a little bit high. I do expect the minutes to drop down a little bit at 25.7, uh, nearly 26 minutes per night over the last couple of weeks. But the assists and the blocks are, to me, levels that we have never seen Jonas ever do before. Um He is typically normally a guy that averages 0.7.8 blocks per game. So he is over nearly basically tripled that uh, over this stretch, which again, low volume category. Don't let that sort of taint or or change your perspective of him. It is still very early in the season. We've only had 14 games in the season from Jonas. So his 1.7 blocks on the season is very misleading. I still think that um, that is going to definitely come down. Uh, With those low volume stats, it's just one or two plays um, and that can change a lot of his value and they can be very sporadic. So I do believe that he is a very clear sell high. In my projections, I have him closer to the 100 range mark. I still think he could be solid when it comes to field goal percentage, uh, points, rebounds, and he's not going to kill you from the free throw line as well. But he is not a guy that gives you assists, steals, um, and he's more of a you know 0.8 blocks guy than uh, above one block per game player as well. So he is someone that I think is a clear um, sell high value player. So if I can get someone who's even top 75 for Jonas, I think that I would do that. If, for example, um, the other thing that I think we can be doing with Jonas and or worry about Jonas is the fact that he is potentially going to be um, a victim of when someone like a Herb Jones and a CJ McCollum comes back into this squad because... Right now, another player we're going to talk about in a second, but Herb Jones, sorry, did I say Herb Jones coming back? Uh, Trey Murphy, when he comes back, 
So Herb Jones is playing really well right now. You've obviously got Brandon Ingram. You've got Zion Williamson. When CJ returns, he's going to be into the starting lineup. How does Trey Murphy fit in there? I think what I would be wanting to do if I was the New Orleans Pelicans is I'd want to be playing those four players that we just mentioned. And I also still want to be getting Trey Murphy out there for a solid high 20s in minutes. You've also got Larry Nance Jr. who's been out for a little while as well, which is helping a player like Valanciunas. You've got a lot of opportunities to go with more of a small ball lineup, I believe, with the Pelicans when their squad is completely healthy. And I do think that that helps a player like Jonas Valanciunas, or, or sorry, means that a player like Jonas Valanciunas is going to fall off dramatically from where he is. So if I can get anyone who's inside the top 75 for Valanciunas, I absolutely would do that. If I can get anywhere close to this ranking, um, or this ranking, sorry, right here, uh, 22nd in 9-cat, top 50, I would do it in an absolute instant. Um, yeah. It really, really clear sell high to me because I do believe that it will uh, it will come down quite quickly. Let's talk about the next player here, which is Herb Jones, his teammate. Herb Jones has been on an absolute tear. Uh, he was he missed a few games with injury, but since coming back, hit the ground running again, and he is currently the 14th ranked player over the last two weeks in minus one. He is the fourth ranked player in the last two weeks in nine category leagues and 35th when it comes to um, points leagues. And how is he doing? Well, he's absolutely destroying the defensive stats at the moment. In the last um, two weeks, he's been averaging 2.8 steals, 1.8 blocks. He's also... Uh, it is on small sample size, only four games because he did miss that time, but he's getting five assists per game, which is well up from what he's been doing in the past. He's also getting one and a half threes and shooting an insane 59% from the field and 87.5% from the free throw line. So everything is up for Herb Jones. On the season, he is still the 20th ranked player for nine category leagues. So even if you extend that sample size out a bit more, he's very, very high. Now, I do think that Herb Jones is going to be an improver this year, and I have adjusted his projections on my uh, on ballboysmba.com and he comes out in a nine cat as a pretty highly valued player. In minus one rankings when we're considering punt builds and things like that, he's not as valuable because he is a guy that is, you know, pretty good across the board, a little bit more boosted with low turnovers as well and those defensive stats are really the the big thing floating his value. If I'm just trying to find his minus one ranking on my projections here. Okay, so I've got him projected at 65th when it comes to minus one. He is inside the top 50 if I'm looking at nine category value when I've got my projections. Um, he's going to be an elite steals guy. That's going to be there. His blocks uh, look like they've come up a little bit and he looks like a more aggressive offensive player and a more efficient shooter. So I do think that there is some improvement there and I no longer value him as a guy around that 100 mark. I think he's a little bit better than that. But if you've got someone thinking that he's a top 40 player um, because these steals and blocks are going to keep up and these assists are going to keep up, I would absolutely cash that in. I probably would still cash him in for a top 50 player, despite my projections having him as a top 50 player in my nine category rankings, just because I don't think that the steal and block numbers really encapsulate the value to my team compared to what that ranking number might suggest. So other players inside my top 50 um, that you might be able to swing for him. Like I would much rather, for example, like a Devin Vassell as a guy who we talked about in yesterday's show who was a buy low candidate. I think that he's going to be a better player and you could probably get Devin Vassell and something for a Herb Jones based on what they've been doing. So that might be something that I would try. I'd much rather someone like a Zach Levine or a DeJounte Murray or those kind of types. If you can get those types of players, I would absolutely do that. Um, would you flip in for someone like an OG Ananobi? Uh, I think that those two are very similar when it comes to their projections and value to me. So that's how I'd be kind of viewing Herb Jones. If you can get someone who you think is going to be better than that for him, that's the kind of player that I would be trading for. But he has definitely improved in my opinion, but definitely not to to this level where he is basically a first round guy. Obviously, you're not going to be able to get that for a trade, but he, he is killing it right now and I'd be trying to cash in. I do think he'll take a slight hit when Trey Murphy comes back, but not too much. It's just the full fluctuations and variability of those uh, defensive stats, which can come and go any given day. Let's talk about 
the uh, the GOAT, some might say, LeBron James as a sell-high player. He's been awesome. He, the, he's the ageless one. He is putting up big, big numbers. And so far, he is averaging 34.4 minutes per game. He is the 15th ranked player in nine category leagues on the season. In the last two weeks, he is the 8th ranked player for minus one, 12th in nine cat, and 8th in points leagues on Yahoo's default scoring. And uh, it's a little bit trickier for Yahoo points leagues because I think him being 8th is a realistic thing for you to expect uh, for him for the rest of the season. That is definitely something that I would not be shocked if he's a first round top six or seven player for points leagues, that's fine. So he's less of a sell high there, but I still think he is a sell high because of the fact that the man is turning 39 soon and he is not being able to stay healthy these last few seasons. And if I can get someone who's close to the value that he's putting up now and simply feeling more comfortable and confident that they're going to be available for the rest of the season, I would do that and pull the trigger. In a category sense, I do think that he is outperforming what I expect him to do. The biggest thing that we can point to here is he is averaging 1.7 steals per game, and that is just something that he is not going to do for the rest of the season. Now, he has had a bit of up and down in terms of his steal numbers of the past several years. Last year, he averaged 0.9. Year before, it was up at 1.3. Year before, that was between the two at 1.1. So could he average 1.3 steals for the season? Yeah, he could, but it's still a big difference between 1.3 and 1.7. He's also averaging 0.8 blocks, which, again, he's had a season in 21-22 where he averaged 1.1. So it's not out of the realm of possibility, but he's also two out of the last three seasons averaged 0.6. So I do think that there's a little bit of scope for those numbers to come down. And you factor that in with the fact that he is 39 years old or very close to 39 years old, and that injury risk is quite high because of that. He's playing huge minutes after that first game where they thought they were going to limit his minutes That's clearly not happening. He's questionable basically every game just because the Lakers love to do that. But if I can get someone who's top 25, probably top 30 in category leagues uh, for LeBron James, I'd pull the trigger, be happy with the production that I've got from him so far, and just kind of get out unscathed until uh, before the wheels, I believe, fall off when it comes to his health and injury. And I think his production will go back down to that kind of a level anyway. But he is obviously killing it. He's got the big name associated to him as well. So it's LeBron freaking James. You can use that in your narrative when you're trying to trade him. He's, you know... You know, he's going to beat Father Time and he's, he's he's a cyborg or whatever you want narrative you say so that people aren't as nervous trading for him. You might be able to get good value back for LeBron. But I do believe that he will come back, especially in a category league. And I am uh, still concerned of the fact that he's going to, at some point this season, miss uh, a decent chunk of time. Let's talk about another guy who I was probably higher on than a lot of other people in the preseason, John Collins, who has thus far been a very solid player for us in fantasy basketball. On the season, he is the 59th ranked player in nine category leagues. In the last two weeks, he is the 44th in minus one, 43rd in nine category rankings, and 56th when it comes to Yahoo points. This was a guy that people were drafting closer to pick 100, and I do believe that he presented some value at that spot. But I do think there are a few things here that maybe inflate his ranking numbers and maybe inflate everyone's valuation of how he's been going um, compared to what he actually has been doing. So what's been going well the last couple of weeks? Well, he's been hitting two threes per game. Um, His scoring is up. His um, rebounding is up and his blocks up. So he's blocking two shots per game in the last two weeks. That's going to be basically sliced in half, I believe. He's probably closer to a 1, 1. 1.1 block per game guy. His reboundings are up at 9.6. Last year, he was at 6.5. I did cite that as something that I thought that could improve, and I do think it will. I think he'll be closer to 8 rebounds, but you take off you know, nearly 2 rebounds per game from that last two-week average, and that is going to drop his ranking. You drop the threes down from two threes per game to closest to 1.3, 1.4. That also then drops the points down as well. So a few areas that are just going to come down a little bit, the blocks basically being sliced in half. And you've got a fair way to fall when it comes to the ranking. So if you can get someone who's top 50, top 60 for a John Collins, I would 100% do it. I think he'll settle in closer to the 75 to 80 range. Um, he's a really good player when you're punting point. Uh, sorry, punting assists and steals, or one or uh, one of the other of those categories, um, because he is solid in a lot of other areas. But he is also a guy that um, 
you know, it's not. Uh, a, there's no super high strength when it comes to his game. He's not going to be, you know, a, a huge boost in any one category. He's just kind of above average in a lot, which is fine. It's good. It has use in a lot of teams. But I do think that his ranking is maybe overinflating his value, much to the similar degree of like a Tobias Harris might in a similar kind of a sense. But he is someone that I think that if you can get, um, yeah, so that top 50, top 60 value, I would do that. I would probably even take top 75, top 80 value in a points league. He's probably not as good in a points league setting uh, because I do think that those um, rebounds, blocks, and points do scale back a little bit. And you also have to factor, in, factor into the... Um, the, the fact that Walker Kessler is going to come back into this team. Now, he was still playing well with Walker Kessler there. He is obviously um, playing better with Walker Kessler out of the lineup. More minutes of center. Have seen his rebounds and blocks go up as Walker Kessler comes back, which is probably another week away. So you have a little bit of time uh, to execute this sell high, but it's usually better to do it earlier than right before because people are always onto it. Um, that will definitely cause his value to drop a little bit. I don't think he's going to be completely gone or, or evaporated, but I do think that the um, you know, it just scales back a little bit. And uh, yeah, if you can get a couple of rounds of value for a John Collins who, you know, point to the fact that he's in a new situation and he's been a top 50 player two out of the last three seasons, then you might be able to execute a sell high here. The last one, the fifth player, is probably the most difficult sell high because it's the most obvious one, and it is Duncan Robinson. But I'm going to put him here anyway because he is someone that he's playing really well right now and surprised me. I didn't think that he still kind of had this in him, but he is doing a really good job. In the last two weeks, he is the 59th ranked player in minus one, 56th in nine category. He's not as good of a points league, though, at 93rd in Yahoo points. But still, I do believe that that is still a sell high in points league because he might be someone we don't roster in a little while in points leagues and maybe even in category leagues as well because it's the biggest thing here. He's the one who's benefited the most with Tyler Hero being injured. Now, I do think he might be able to hold on to some value even when Tyler Hero comes back, but he is shooting... Uh, insane right now, 3.93s per game in nearly 35 minutes. The 35 minutes is definitely going to come down. The usage, I do also believe, will come down a little bit as well. He still will have his use as a three-point guy. Maybe he can average two to two and a half threes per game uh, in a smaller role when Hero was back. But 3.9 is one of the best in the league. And I do think that that's going to come back and that will drop his scoring. So he's scoring 18.4 points per game in the last two weeks, shooting 49.4% from the field as well. If we look at his last three seasons, he's averaged 37%, 40%, 44%. So when he's at 49.5% right now, you know that's going to come back closer to, he might be able to shoot 44, 45%. But even if you drop that back another four or five percentage points, and you scale back the usage and minutes uh, a, a decent amount when Tyler Hero comes back. Uh, when your value is completely tied up in that, you're going to see a dramatic fall in your overall fantasy contribution. So to me, if I can get anyone in the tie of the top 100... For Duncan Robinson, I'm doing it for category leagues. If I can get anyone inside the top 120 for points leagues, I'm doing it because I think that as soon as Tyler Hero comes back, he's going to see a significant hit to his value. If you can't do it, just enjoy the ride. He's been a great uh, sort of short-term streaming option with Tyler Hero out. Uh, but yes, I do think that pretty obviously Duncan Robinson is going to fall back and not perform this well uh, when the team is healthy. All right, that is our sell high video, guys. Let me know down in the comments section below if you believe there's anyone else that you are considering trading or selling high. Remember, though, guys, if you're asking me a trade question in a category league, let me know, are you in a punt situation? Are you looking for someone who is, um, you know, looking for a specific category? Are you strong in a category, weak in a category? Are you in a head-to-head? -head? Are you in a roto league? Let me know as much information as possible, and I can give you the most educated answer as possible. If you're asking a points league question about trades, please mention if you're in an ESPN or a Yahoo category, uh, sorry, points league, because the valuation is different. And if you have any weird quirks about um, your point scoring or anything like that, and I will give you guys the best and most accurate response that I possibly can. We're going to be going through the 14 games tomorrow, and I'm going to be doing that one live. So stay tuned for that one. Should be up just after the finishing of the last game. I'll see you guys then. Bye.